Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Glacial Geek Kill Team Battle Report. I'm Phil, the Glacial Geek, coming to you here from Savannah Line Games in Pooler, Georgia, where I'll be fighting a 125-point Kill Team Arena mission between my Astra Militarum and Neil's Blood Angels. So the story that we've got going on here is that the uh, Blood Angels were sent on a mission to go uh, take, uh, take out this facility. It was uh, important to the local PDF, but uh, the Blood Angels had determined that if this uh, facility was destroyed, uh, that they would uh, that it would better suit their mission that they were doing with the rest of the campaign that was going on. But the PDF disagreed and said that they were going to hold this and they didn't want the, the Blood Angels to do it. So the Blood Angels uh, decided to come down and do it anyway. So uh, that is the story we're going to play. We're going to be playing a uh, Kill Team Arena mission called Desperate Destruction. Essentially, there are four objectives underneath each of these doors on these rooms over here. Uh, if uh, the primary uh, victory conditions here are that at the end of a battle round, if you control any objective, you score a point. If you control both of the objectives that are closest to your opponent's, uh, your opponent's uh, uh, deployment zone, you score two victory points. Um, but you can score an additional victory point if you have more wounds worth of models inside of the destruction hatch or the, uh, what is it called? The, uh, the stockpile hatch, which is in the middle here. So you have to be completely within it. So you, you, you can't be like straddling the line over here. You have to be completely within the middle here. And whichever, whichever person has uh, more wounds worth of models inside of there scores an additional victory point. Uh, we also have three uh, secret uh, arena objectives that we've chosen here. Uh, those will come up as we score them um, going along there. But they're kept secret until you score them. So you can score a maximum of uh, nine victory points for the primary objectives, and you can score a maximum of three for each of the secondary objectives. So that is going to be it for the mission. That is going to be it for the story. Before we go any further, though, let's show you the two kill teams that are going to be fighting it out. It's a cost too many and then for the Blood Angels, his kill team will consist of, from left to right here, his leader, who is an infiltrator sergeant, we then have an Eliminator, who's his Sniper Specialist. We then have a Comm Specialist, who is an Infiltrator. Demolitions Expert, who is an Infiltrator. And then three more Infiltrators. So for the Guard, my kill team will consist of, from left to right here, we have my Leader, who is a Sergeant. We have a Sniper Specialist, which is a Scion Gunner with a Plasma Gun. We've got a Heavy Specialist, who is a Special Weapons Gunner with a Flamer. We've got a Demolitions Expert, which is a heavy weapons uh, or a special weapons uh, gunner with a flamer. We then have a third special weapons gunner with a sniper rifle. We have a uh, guardsman gunner with a grenade launcher. We have three more Tempest Scion gunners with plasma guns. And we have four Tempest Scions with hotshot las guns. All right, so going over deployment now, we've got my one of my Scions over on the side here. Two of my gunners with the plasma here, a nether scion, my guy with the grenade launcher, and my leader on this side. Over on this side, I've got my sniper in the front there. I've got a scion right behind him, the two flamer bros, the two uh, two more of the gunners with the plasma guns, uh, including the sniper, which is the front one there, and then another scion on this side. Blood Angel's deployment. Uh, he has special rule on each of his guys here, forward, uh, forward inf infiltrator or forward positions, allowing them to deploy anywhere outside of nine inches from um, your opponent's deployment zone. So he deployed everybody along that line essentially here. So he's got his comms guy here. He's got his sniper guy right next to him. He's got his leader. He also has his demolitions expert and a regular infiltrator over there. Got another infiltrator back in the door here and another infiltrator on the objective back over here. So that is deployment for the Blood Angels. Uh, we are now going to roll off to see who will have initiative going into round one. I rolled a nine. My opponent rolled a ten. So we'll come back to you after a movement phase for the Blood Angels here on turn one. Uh, All right, movement phase for the Blood Angels. This guy moved to the side and opened the door over here, allowing him to control that objective. Because he can't control the objective unless the door is open. He readied himself just staying right there. All four of these guys, two from this side and the two from this side, moved into the center here, holding that stockpile in the middle there, trying to get those uh, explosives, I'm sure, put in down there. And this guy moved up here to hold that door because I can't open it if he is holding that. So that is going to be it for the movement phase. Uh, we will come back to you with the movement phase for the Astra Militarum. All right, movement phase for the Astra Militarum here. Um, my scion there moved up to open the door. All these guys moved up around here, getting line of sight down on these guys over here. 
Uh, my leader moved around here and opened up the door to hold that objective. This guy moved up, opened the door. This guy advanced into the uh, door room over here. They all moved up to the door, getting ready to open it next turn. A lot of pain coming out this way if he can't make that five up, uh, five up uh, roll there. So we'll see how that goes. So that's going to be it for the movement phase. We will come back to you with the shooting phase. Start off the shooting phase. His sniper is going to start us off here as eliminator. Um, he's going to get plus one from the comms, but he did move with the heavy weapon, so he's going to be minus one. Who are you going to shoot into? The front hyperfang shot into the front here. So it's going to be D three shots. Getting three shots here. These are going to be hitting on uh, minus one, plus one, um, and I, he's not going to be obscured from where he's shooting there. So this is going to be hitting on. Um, uh, minus one plus one here. equals uh, yes, uh, what is that? Uh, so threes. He's going to be hitting on threes here. Getting two hits. These are going to be strength four. So looking for threes to wound. That's going to be two wounds. AP nothing. Uh, that is a Tempest the Scion guy there. So he is going to have four up Carapace armor saves. And I make one, fail one. I'm uh, going to spend a CP to reroll this. Into a fire, he's good to go. Woo! Get paid for it. So now that front guy is going to repay the uh, favor, shooting into him over here. He's not obscured within half range with the plasma, and I'm going to supercharge it. Um, because he's not obscured, he doesn't get the benefit from his cloak being an additional minus one to hit. So it's just going to be uh, two shots hitting on three. Supercharged. So it's going to be one hit, strength eight, wounded on a two. That is a wound, so that's going to be AP minus three. So he's got a six up save. No, does not make it. So that's going to be two damage going into him over here. Two, and it takes him down to zero. So two for the injury roll. And on a four, he's out of action. All right, so now his comm specialist is going to fire into the front guy there. He's going to be hitting on fours because of obscurement. No, no hits. So now the other plasma guy here is going to fire into his leader uh, in rapid fire range, but he is obscured. So it's going to be two shots hitting on fours, uh, supercharged. That's going to be two hits. That's going to be good. Wounding on twos. That's going to be two wounds, two six up saves. No, he fails them. So uh, the first one that goes through does two damage, which takes him down to zero. So it's two injury rolls here. Ah, uh, he's gonna have a flesh wound. Ah, killer! And now his demos guy is gonna shoot into the front guy over here. Two shots hitting on fours of obscurement. No, no hits. All right, my opponent's gonna re-roll one of those. No, one into a one. I've got, I, got, I was gonna say I have a t-shirt if you want that. Check it out in the merch store below. Check it out, wall of one one. So now my grenade guy is gonna fire into the comm specialist over here. Um, he's got uh, one shot. This is gonna be with a crack grenade. Uh, he is obscured, so hitting on a five. That is a hit. Strength six, so three to wound. That is a wound with a fill phase. Uh, AP minus one, so four up. He's good. And now the leader is going to fire into my plasma guy, the middle plasma guy. Um, so he is within half range. He's within 12 inches. So he's going to have two shots here. Hitting off fours, though, because he is obscured. No, no hits. And then my scion over here is going to fire into his demolitions expert. Uh, minus one because of obscurement. Minus one because of range because he's outside of uh, nine inches because uh, hotshot last gun is 18 inch uh, rapid fire there. Uh, so here we go. Hitting on, uh, yeah, so hitting on a five. No, no hit. So that's going to be the end of the first battle round here. Um, we uh, That is going to be the end of the first battle round. Uh, we both control an objective, which gives us one point for that. Uh, neither of us controls the two objectives closest to our opponent's deployment zone, so we don't score two points for that. But my opponent does have more wounds worth in the center here, uh, getting him an additional point there. Neither of us scored any secondary, so it is going to be uh, one point to me, two points to my opponent. So now we are going to roll to see who has initiative. Going into round two. I rolled a nine. My opponent rolled a two. We'll come back to you after a movement phase for the uh, for the uh, the Tempest of uh, Tempest design for the Imperial Guard here on turn two. Powered all right, movement phase for the uh, Imperial Guard here on turn two. These guys all moved out over into here, getting the line of sight down the pathway over there. Um, my leader moved into the room over here and closed the door behind him. These guys stayed still, holding on. Uh, keeping the door open over there. And now here, my sniper bro is going to try to open this door. He's gonna to try to deny it on a five plus, that door does not open. 
Yeah. No, it will open here. No. So kadoosh. And the rest of these guys are going to ready. <laughs> Alrighty, so now to the Blood Angels moving phase. These three guys readied themselves. He closed that door and he opened his door. So he's still holding an objective. And then over to here, this guy is going to charge because he's going to be in shot anyway. So may as well do it on sixes. So here we go. He is going to charge into these guys. We're going to start with uh, Flamers first. So we're going to go with the heavy guy. Actually, yeah, we'll do the heavy guy first. So it's going to be D6 shots, auto hits. It's going to be three hits here. Uh, forgot one extra dice over here. So that's going to be three, strength four, uh, looking for fours to wound. That is going to be two wounds, AP nothing, so it's going to be looking for three up saves. Fails one of them, so he takes one wound. And then the second flamer guy is going to fire his flamer. Getting five hits on that one. That's a pretty good one. These, again, are wounding on fours. That is going to be one, two, three, four wounds there. So we have four three-up saves. Fails another one, which takes him down to zero. You're going to spend a CP to re-roll that? All right, he's going to spend a CP to re-roll that. Into a two, so he is going to be down to zero. Let's see what happens. Is he going to be out of action? On a five, he is out of action. All right, so into the shooting phase. Um, I decided that I am going to spend two CP on decisive shot to allow me to shoot first. So my opponent responded because he doesn't want me to shoot first. Uh, so uh, we are now going to roll off to see who will actually get the first shot. Uh, I rolled an eight, so I will get the first shot. We'll come back to that. So now my uh, plasma guy is going to start us off by firing into his leader. I'm going to have two shots here. Uh, no wounds. He's got one. He's got one wound on him. Let's because he's got the uh, the 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 uh, what we call it the flesh wound there. So then it's going to be two shots. He is obscured. I am going to. I'm not going to supercharge it. Not going to supercharge. N O T not. Just to make sure it's clear. So two shots hitting on uh, hitting on fours because he is obscured. That is going to be one hit. Oh, no, but he is. And I did not supercharge. Oh, I scared myself there. <laughs> I'm glad I did not. Did not. So that's going to be wounding on a three because it is strength seven, toughness four. And that is a wound. AP minus three. So he gets a six up save. Oh, no, he does not. So that's only one damage, though. But plus one because of the, uh, the flesh wound already. And with that one, he's, I'm going to spend my other CP to reroll this. And with that three plus one is four, he is out of action because he's not within an inch of uh, terrain that is between him there. So he is out of action. So I scored to cut off the head as my arena objective here. So when the enemy leader is taken out of action, score victory points equal to five minus the number of the current battle round. Current battle round is two. So I scored three victory points for there, the max that I can for the scores of this card. So I am very happy with that one there. I will take that. So now my opponent's comm specialist is going to fire into the front guy over here. Two shots hitting on threes. That's two hits, strength four, looking for threes to wound. One wound, four up save. No, he failed that one, so injury roll to him. On a six, he's out. And then this guy over here is gonna get plus one to hit because of the comm specialist. He's gonna fire into my other Tempestus Scion over here, hitting on twos. That's two hits, six is an auto wound. And then this is because he's the marksman, and that's gonna be a wound there, so it's gonna be two wounds. Because um, he's got the marksman auto bolt, uh, yeah, bolt car uh, marksman bolt carbine, yeah. which uh, auto wounds on a six to hit. So it's gonna be two wounds there, looking for four up saves. And I make one fail one, so here comes the injury roll. On a one, he takes a flesh wound. All right, so now my plasma guy here is gonna fire into the comm specialist. He is going to be supercharging with him. So it's going to be two shots hitting on fours because he is obscured by my guy between me there. I can't quite get see all of around his model there. So here we go. That's going to be two hits with Phil faces. Wounding on twos. That's two wounds. Six up saves. No, makes neither of them. So that's going to be damage two, which takes him down to zero. Uh, so it's going to be two injury rolls. And with that six, he's out of action. And then my grenade guy is going to fire into his middle guy over there. Hitting on a five because he is obscured. That is a hit with a fill face. Three to wound. That is a wound. AP minus one. Four up save. No, he does not get it. So D3 damage. One damage. 
And now my Scion is going to fire into him. Two shots because he's in rapid fire range. Minus one because of the flesh wound there. So he's going to be hitting on fours. That is going to be one hit. Wounding on a five. No, no wound. All right, so at the end of the turn here, uh, we do have some leadership tests to take. Uh, my opponent has lost four of his seven, so he has to roll to see if he is broken. I think your highest leadership right now is seven on the board because you don't have your leader on the board. Um, so that is going to be... So you're going to be rolling uh, 2d6 and trying to pass on a leadership of seven on uh, these Marines here. So on a seven, see if you fail. No, you're good to go on that one. Uh, and no one has a flesh wound on him. I do have one flesh wound and one guy out of action. So I do have to roll to see if he is going to be out because his leadership is six. So on a six, I could fail this. No, I don't. So he is good to go. So that's going to be the end of the turn. At the end of the turn, I do score an objective. Thin their ranks at the end of the battle round. Score one victory point. If two or more enemy models were taken out of action at a battle round, which I did. So that is going to be that for that turn. Uh, so I got one point for that one. Um, at the end of the battle round, we both control one objective, and my opponent scores uh, the middle one. So uh, it brings me uh, brings my opponent to a total of four points for holding one for the objective and holding uh, the middle thing there. And then he is going to have, uh, then I'm gonna have my, uh, my uh, I control one objective over here, which gets me one point. I scored three for cut off the head and I scored one for thin the ranks. So that is going to get me uh, a total of one, two, three, four, five, six points. So six to four right now to the Astra Militarum. Uh, we will now roll to see who has initiative going into round three. Nice. Roll to seven. My opponent rolled a six. So we'll come back to you after movement phase for the Imperial Guard. So movement phase for the Astro Militarum here. Um, I uh, readied these two guys over here. He moved up to this door, opened it up to allow him to advance up to the door over here. Cannot open it because he was already sitting there. Um, this guy moved up here to open the door. Um, oh, no, no. He advanced, so he cannot open the door. But he is next to the door now over to there. Uh, then these guys all moved out into the hallway here. These two guys advanced up over here. Uh, the thing is, I'm running Talarn regimental tactics here, so they can actually fire the flamers even though they move, even though they advance. The this guy cannot because he uh, had a heavy weapon, but he's now in there. So now I have two wounds worth uh, inside the uh, hall there. He only has one there. So that is going to be it for the movement phase. We will come back to you with the um, with the movement phase for the Blood Angels. So movement phase for the Blood Angels, both the guys back over here um, readied themselves because they just want to hold those uh, positions. And this guy over here is going to charge into both my guys here. So we're going to go with the Flamer first. D6 auto hits. That is going to be three hits. These are going to be strength four, toughness four, fours to wound. Getting two wounds. So it's going to be two three up saves. Failed one of them. Do you want to spend a CP to reroll? I'll just lose a wound. I mean, you've yes. only got one left, so I will do an injury roll on you if you want. That's true. Uh, what do you want to do? One second. My opponent's going to spend the CP to reroll it, and he makes it there. So then I've got my sniper bro. He is going to fire, hitting on a six. No, does not hit it. So uh, I am. You know what? I'm gonna I, I'm gonna re, I'm gonna spend a CP to reroll that. I know it seems crazy, but uh, I, if I can get this, it would be great. No, I don't get it there. So I'm, we're both down to one CP this turn, uh, but that's going to be that. So I uh, cannot fail the charge because he is definitely handed. All right, so uh, no shooting phase because I uh, can't see any of the guys in there, and he is now engaged in combat. So we're going to go straight into the fight phase here. My opponent is going to go. He's going to put one attack into each, so we'll go one into the demolitions guy first, hitting on a three. That is a hit. <clears throat> wounding on a three, toughness three. Oh, plus one, so wounding on a two. That is a wound. Looking for a five up armor save. Don't make it. I'm a. Uh, I'm gonna spend a CP. My other CP to reroll that. No, it's not gonna happen here. So do I injury roll a two? He's gonna spend his CP to reroll that one. Get out of here. Oh, back into a one. He takes a flesh wound. And now uh, he's gonna attack into my sniper bro over there. That is not going to be a hit. All right, so now my guys are going to attack back into him. I'm going to roll both attacks in. Both of these can actually do an injury roll if it comes down to it. Not that I think it's very likely. So we got two attacks here, hitting on fives. Oh, no, hitting on fours? Fours or fives? Fours, I think. Fours. 
So it's actually going to be two hits. Wounding on fives, though. I need that last roll right now. Um, nope, don't get either of them there. So that's going to be the end of the turn. Um, I do. You do have to roll to see if you are broken. On a four, he's good to go. And no one has a flesh wound. I have two flesh wounds now that I have to roll. So I'm going to roll for this guy over here. On a six, he is going to be uh, shocked over there. And then the next guy over here. On a five is actually good to go because I've only got one guy out of action there. So, um, oh no. Plus one because he is also going to be nerfed because he's shook. Uh, but he's got plus one for the guy right next to him. Thank you over there. So he is actually going to be plus one minus one means that he's okay to go. Oh, okay, fair enough. All right, so he's going to be fine. But that's going to be it for that. So at the end of the turn, um, we both control one objective. I now have more wounds inside here since he's down to one wound over here. So I score two points for the primary here. My opponent scores one point for the primary. Um, but we did not score any other of the... Um, oh, no, I did. I scored one of my secondary here. Engage on all fronts. So I have to have a model completely in each of the quarters here. So these guys are in these quarters. And then these guys are in these quarters over here, getting me one point uh, for that one as well. So... Um, at the at the end of turn three, so now we're going to roll to see you as initiative going into turn four. I rolled a five. My opponent rolled a ten. We'll come back to you after moving phase for the Blood Angels. <laughs> moving phase for the Blood Angels here. Both his guys readied over here, keeping that door closed. And he's just getting ready. Who's ever coming through this door over here? Uh, and over here, he stayed in combat. So that's going to be it for the Blood Angel move phase. We'll come back to you after moving phase for the Astro Militarum. All right, so first things first, before I do anything else, over here, we're going to start here. I'm going to try to open the door because this might determine other things that I want to do with movement phase. So he's going to try to open that door on a five. My opponent stops me. On a six, yes. that door ain't going nowhere. Yes. Moving phase for the Astro Militarum because he couldn't open that door. He's shook over here. He readied himself. He moved up into the hallway over here. These guys stayed on their objectives back over here. Uh, these guys fell back out of combat. He stayed where he was, uh, or opened the door, I should say, for these guys who then came through the door looking on him over here. So that's going to be it for the movement phase. We'll come back to you with the shooting phase. Hey. Shooting phase, his ready guy over here is going to fire into my dude bro over there. Two shots, hitting on threes because he is not obscured. That is two hits, one of which is already a wound because of the marksman. Uh, oh, well, probably, the other one does not wound, though. You're going to spend a CP to reroll that? Going to spend a CP to reroll that into a wound. So that's going to be two wounds, four up armor saves. And I make them both. Woo! So my ready guy over here is going to fire into his duper over there. I am going to supercharge. Why not? Let's give this a shot here. So he's going to have two shots. Hitting on threes because he is not obscured. <laughs> That's why you don't supercharge. Oh, big oof. Big oof. Big oof. So now this guy over here who ready is going to fire into the front guy there. Hitting on fours though because he is obscured. That's getting one hit, which is a wound already because of the marksman bolt carbine. So I have a four up armor save. Fail that. I'm going to spend a CP to re-roll that. Back into a one. <sighs> Boy, T-shirt. Injury. Injury roll. Go away. On a three, takes a flesh wound. So now his demolitions guy is going to fire into my uh, plasma bro over here. He's going to have two shots hitting on threes. That is going to be one hit, wounding on a three. That is not a wound. All right, so now my guys are just going to start firing because his guys have all fired. So we're going to start with this guy over here, firing at him. Uh, rapid firing. I am going to supercharge. No, I'm not going to supercharge. <laughs> I'm not going to make that same mistake twice. Here we go. Hitting on threes, though. There we go. Two hits. Wounding on threes. That is going to be one wound. AP minus three. So that's looking for a six up save. No, he failed that. So it's one damage. Uh, he only had one wound left. So let's see if he is out of action here. On a six, he is out. And now my sniper here is going to fire into the front guy. Uh, he is going to supercharge, may as well. Hitting on fours, though, because he is uh, does have a flesh wound there. That is going to be one hit. Wounding on a two. That is a wound. Six up save. No, does not make it. So this is going to be uh, two damage. So looking for uh, 
injury roll here. And on that six, he's out. And then my uh, plasma guy back there is gonna fire into him. Uh, two shots hitting on uh, force because he is obscured. That's gonna be one hit. That is a wound. That is not a save, so two damage here. And he's out of action. Oof. And that is the end of the game because he's got no guys left here. Um, I do score for holding objective. I do score the middle one there. Um, I also got another point for uh, thin their ranks and another point for engage on all fronts. So that gave me a total of, uh, what did I, I got like one point for each turn. So that's gonna be four points for the primary. Uh, plus one for this, so five points for the primary. I got three points for cut off the head, so that makes it into eight points. Uh, two points for engage on all fronts, so that's to, to 10 points. Two points for thin the ranks to 12 points. Uh, my opponent scored uh, five points total. Did not get any of his secondaries there because of how I played there. So man, that was a killer game. When he had his positioning, I was I was worried because he's like had position where he could get it. Um, I've played games where he just like was holding doors and keeping me from being able to get where I needed to be, um, which is really awesome ability for those guys there. But, um, I mean, I had I had the weapons, and that's what it was. I wanted to see what would happen if I just brought, like, a super elite Astra Militarum, like, with a bunch of special weapons, and uh, it worked well going up against the Space Marines for sure, especially with the Plasma. I was doing some serious work there. So, uh, but a ton of fun, and always great to see all of that, uh, you know, getting to see them uh, beating each other's faces here in the front there. So I guess... The PDF protected the facility from the Blood Angels blowing it up. So, I hope you guys have all enjoyed this. I certainly have. I have been Phil the Glacial Geek as always. My opponent's been Neil. And until next time, have fun.